access your account, please enter your four-digit PIN. You have two new messages. To access the main menu at any time, press star. First new message from unknown caller. Hey, sis, how you been? Listen, I'm sorry I haven't called in a while. It's just I've been really busy and it's really exciting. Like, I'm living in a big city and... Uh, I'm sorry, I can't even get through the first sentence of that lie. Honestly, I'm in a living fucking nightmare. Every day, my apartment seems, like, smaller, like it's shrinking and I'm not looking. And remember when I was joking when I moved in about my building being a crack house? No, like, I'm starting to think it actually is a crack house. There's all these weird burn marks on the walls and the ceiling. Like, that could only come from people setting themselves on fire, right? And it's been six months, and I haven't even seen my neighbors once. And work, Christ, has gotten weird. I'm still working at the call center, but I think when I talked to you last, I was selling magazine subscriptions. Um, but now I've moved on to this new thing, and it's similar. Uh, but, okay, so there's these posters around town, and they're apps for the economists, and they're, like, issue posters. So they have different hot fucking button topics on them, so... You say things like, China, Iran, global warming, and then what's your opinion? And there's a number on the poster where you can call to give your opinion. And if people call the number, I don't know what your answer is. You'd be surprised at how many people call that number, and you would not be surprised at how many of them are crazy. Crazy and angry. They're always angry. They're angry at me, and they're yelling about Iran or whatever, and they're blaming me as if I'm responsible. Do you know how many times a day I have to apologize to strangers for North Korea's nuclear weapons program? Far more than I should have to. They're always accepting the apology, too, and that's a weird thing. Like, if I was actually in charge of North Korea, like they think I am, I don't think that saying sorry would be enough. And those are the ones that stay on topic. They're the good ones. Half of them end up ranting about the Masons and the New World Order and the alien Kennedys and all kinds of conspiracy bullshit. And then some of them seem very calm and reasonable at first. And those are the fuckers you gotta watch out for because they're always the racists. They try to sneak it in there on you. So, anyway, that's just getting yelled at by crazy people for hours on end. And at the end, I'm supposed to try and sell them a prescription to The Economist, but of course they never buy it. It's not aimed at them. But, you know, if I was selling subscriptions to Smear TV Quarterly or something, I'd, I'd be making some serious commission. But here's the thing. I'm calling them all crazy people right now, talking to you, but it's not always really clear to me that they're crazy, because I spend eight hours a day talking to these guys, and that's much longer than with any quote-unquote normal people. They're kind of my like normal now, you know? And everybody else is starting to seem really weird. They're not all that bad, you know? Like, there's this one guy, Peter, who calls me up all the time. He's a regular. Um, Peter's big thing is that he's angry and with the government satellites. But, you know, aside from that, he's actually really sweet. And he always asks me how I am. And in a way, he's probably the closest thing I have to a friend at work. And not all of his conspiracies are that ridiculous. Like, he's telling me about how Denver Air... To return this call, press 2. To mark this message as read, press 7. To keep it as new, press 9. For more options, press 4. Message archived. Next message from unknown caller. Hey, I think I got cut off. So anyway, what I was saying is that the Denver airport is sort of like a uh, secret Masonic concentration camp because there's all these like underground parts to it that they built that nobody's allowed in. And if you look at it from above, it's sort of shaped like a swastika. And that all sounds pretty silly, but then I looked at some aerial photographs online, and you know what? It kind of does look like a swastika. Crazy or not, you can't deny what it looks like. So I guess his idea is not completely baseless. I mean, I'm not saying he's right, of course. I'm just saying that he's not completely coming out of left field. And we talk about other stuff, too, like non-conspiracy stuff. It's actually really nice. I kind of like him. And I could sort of see something being there, potentially. I don't know that. I know that's weird, but there's still a lot of stuff I don't know about him. Like, I don't know what he does, for instance. I tried to find out, but he was totally evasive. And I gave him my email address. He thought we could, you know, trade pics or something. And he said that he doesn't use the Internet. I don't know. He's probably, there's probably a good chance he's actually calling from inside a mental institution or something. But... You know, remember Kim? He was a stockbroker, and everybody was fine with that. And that, that was a good job. I got no judgments from Mom and Dad about that. Even though when Wall Street's in the news, they're all stockbrokers are scum. So I can't see how they would judge Peter without admitting that they're hypocrites. So I wonder, this has become, I guess like, this is becoming my world, right? Like, everybody lives in their own world, right? I feel like I'm still sane, but I'm living totally in the world of the mad. And, I mean, am I ever, am I still sane? Because... 
one of my coworkers pointed out something to me. Like, none of the rest of them have ever talked to Peter. When people call in, they totally get diverted randomly to whoever is free on the phone. But for some reason, I always get Peter. And he didn't come out and say it. Like, this guy, he definitely was implying that there was no Peter. Like, he's just inside my head. And, you know, I'm sure they're just messing with me. That's probably what's happening. But I wouldn't trust any of them anyway. A bunch of weirdos. They're just, just bad callers. But the fact that I'm even considering the possibility that he's imaginary is sort of bad sign, I think. Like, I, I was thinking that I, I might have a brain tumor. Like, I've been thinking a lot about having a brain tumor, like, really picturing it, and I can almost feel it in my head. And I, I read somewhere that actually, um, like, worrying about having a brain tumor is one of the symptoms of having a brain tumor. So I went to the doctor to get a CAT scan to see, but apparently it's not covered my own insurance. And I think I should have told him about the fabric conditioner. You know, like, yeah, I mean, I know this is weird, but I kind of took some, like, you know, fabric softener out of my apartment. So I was kind of spacing out one day, and I almost drank some. Like, I poured it into a glass and everything. It was only right at the last second that I realized what it was. It's kind of stupid, but in my defense, like, they do have all names that sound like flavors. Peach River, Blueberry Spring, Orange Blossom, whatnot. And they sound delicious. Like, if you woke somebody up who had been a coma since the 70s, and you asked them if they wanted a Peach River or a Red Bull, they'd probably say Peach River, obviously, or Red Bull. It doesn't even sound like somebody you want to be fond of you. Every part of that name is probably a warning. I can't blame it entirely on the packaging, but I did get it out from under the sink, so what was I thinking? You know what am I talking uh, You know what? Anyway, work's gotten weird. Sorry, it's a long message. I, I just wanted to call and say hi, and it kind of got away from me, but it's four in the morning. I don't really know what I call. To return this call, press 2. To mark this message as read, press 7. To keep it as new, press 9. For more options, press 4. Message archived. End of message review. You have no new messages.